In this Maya animation tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a ball bounce and to add squash and stretch to that bounce to make it more realistic. I'm using the ball rig that was made in previous videos. If you want to know how to make this ball rig, please see the video links in the description. I've referenced the ball rig rather than import it. That way, in case I make any changes to the rig, it will be reflected in this project file. I'm going to switch from the modeling standard workspace to the animation workspace. You can do that by clicking in the menu in the top right hand corner of the screen. Remember that on this particular ball rig, I can't click on the ball, but I can click on this little ring, which is the main controller. Here on the animation timeline, my playhead is at one. I'm going to change the duration of the animation preview by sliding this slider. I can also do that by typing a number here. I'll type in 60. In addition, I'm going to change my frame rate from 24 frames per second to 30 frames per second. When you change your frame rate, you'll notice this number changes, so you need to change it back to what you want. Next, I'm going to pick a view that's going to work better for this animation. This is just going to be a straight drop from the air and then come to a stop bounce. So I'll press spacebar in the viewport, and then I will select this top right view by pressing spacebar when my mouse is hovering over it. I'll middle mouse button drag and reposition. Now I want to start adding keyframes. I can press W on the keyboard to get the move tool. And I don't want to start on the ground. I want to start up in the air. So I can press and hold X to snap to the grid. And I'll move up until I get to say 15. And so here we have it up at 15. Then in the channel box, I'll select translate Y, right click and key selected. You can see that there is a red keyframe next to this. If I move forward in time, let's say go to frame 16, and I can move forward by moving the playhead or typing a frame number right here, notice that this becomes pink. That's because it's telling us there is a keyframe for this channel, but not one set on this frame. So now I'm going to move the ball down and I'm gonna type zero, and then right click key select it. Now we see that the ball will move as I move the playhead. Notice that the graph doesn't fit within our view. If you click on the graph, then press A on your keyboard, you'll be able to see everything. So now I'm going to move farther. Let's say maybe go to frame 23. And I'm going to move the ball back up. So I'm going to move it up to 6. Again, I can press X on my keyboard, and then it'll snap to the grid. There I am at 6. Then I'm going to right click key selected. And again, my playhead is off the screen, but I can just go ahead and zoom out on the graph like this with my scroll wheel. I can middle mouse button plus Alt or Option and drag. So it's very convenient to move around this graph editor. It's very convenient to move around the graph editor just like the screen. We can see our ball bounces, then comes back up. So let's go to frame 29 and bring it back down to zero. I'm gonna type zero in the channel box right click key selected. Next, the ball will go up a little bit and each bounce, the ball loses energy. So it doesn't go as far and it doesn't take as long to get there. So I'm only gonna go to frame 33 and then I'm going to go up to three. I can type in the channel box three, then right click key selected. And I gotta move forward now to frame 36. Then I'll set it to zero, right click key selected. And then I'll move forward to frame 39, and we'll go up to 1.5. Right click, key selected, and then we can go to frame 41, bring it back down to zero, right click, key selected. So now we have an animation of the ball going up and down, but there's a lot of problems with it still. Let's go ahead and play it. Kind of looks like the animation is just hovering there. That's because we don't have the correct interpolation between our keyframes. Right now it's on auto, so that means it's just making a smooth curve in between each frame. And that can be good for like a swimming fish, but we have a bouncing ball that has different speeds depending on what's happening. When it hits the ground, it should have a big impact. So I'm gonna stop. The way we can fix this is selecting the bottom keyframes, so these keyframes on the bottom, and we can hold the shift key and then drag select each of those. With all the bottom keyframes selected, we can click on the break tangent icon. Now, 
I will off click. Now I can click these handles individually and move them up to make them look more like a V. Click on the keyframe and then move its handles up. We want each one of these to be up and straight. So it's more like a V when the ball is hitting the ground. Remember, you can zoom in to get what you need. And we want to make sure that the ball doesn't go past the top. We want it to be a nice, smooth arc there. So now let's see what that does if I press play. Now you can see that the energy is dampening. It's accelerating as it comes down and then slowly going up to the top, hovering a bit, and then coming back. Now by having the keyframes with broken tangents, we can manipulate how they work. Now we also need to see squash and stretch. So I'm gonna stop, I'll twirl out my group, and if I click on the squash controller, notice that the Y graph goes away. Sometimes that's convenient because we don't wanna see it, but if you do wanna see it, let's click again on the main controller, and then down here there's a thumbtack. If I click the thumbtack, my translate Y will stay on the graph, and this can be good for timing and knowing where your keyframes are. Then I'll click on the squash controller. So at frame one, we want to be at zero. So I'm gonna set an initial attribute by clicking on the squash attribute up in the channel box, right click, key selected. Then as it comes down, it's going to start stretching towards the end. So I'm gonna go all the way one frame before it hits the ground. So this is frame 15, it hits the ground on frame 16. So on frame 15, I'm gonna type in 0.3. And I can adjust this by holding the control key and middle mouse button dragging. But I think for this small ball, 0.3 is pretty good. I'm going to right click key selected. So now as you see, the ball comes down and it's stretching as it comes to the ground. So the ball's coming down, hits the ground. When it hits the ground, we want it to be smashed. So I'm going to type negative 0.3 to really exaggerate the impact. And then of course, Right click, key selected. Then right when it leaves here, it's gonna snap back to zero. So I'll select zero, and then right click, key selected. And then somewhere in the arc, it's going to be super stretchy, but then as it slows down, it's not gonna be as stretchy. So maybe around frame 20, I'll type 0.2, and then I'll right click, key selected. And then as we get to the top of the arc, it's definitely gonna be zero there. So here at frame 23, I'll type zero, then right click key selected. Then we're gonna start accelerating down again. And it's gonna keep stretching, 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 stretching all the way to one frame before it hits. So on frame 28 here, I'm gonna type 0.2. Remember before it stretched 0.3. So it's going a little bit slower now. So I'm gonna right click key selected. Then when it gets here, it's gonna be squashed. So I'll type negative 0.2. Now it's squashed and I'll right click key selected. Then the ball will continue to move up and one frame after it's going to be zero. So I'm gonna type zero, then right click key selected. Then there's not a perfect center frame here. So you could go on frame 31 or frame 32, kind of up to you. Let's go on frame 31. So then on frame 31, we're gonna type 0.15. So it's still stretching, and then we'll right click, keyed selected. Moving forward, it's gonna start slowing down to the top where it'll be zero again. And we'll right click, key selected. And then we're going to be accelerating all the way down right before the end here. And then I'm gonna type 0.1, so just a little bit of squash. Key selected, then at the bottom here, negative 0.1 right click key selected, and then we will pop right back to zero on the way up. So zero, right click key selected, and then moving forward, then moving forward, we'll have just a little bit of stretch. So maybe uh, point, uh, zero 0.05, just a little bit of stretch, right click key selected, then we'll be at zero right here, right click key selected, and then probably it's just zero all the way down, but we can go ahead and put a 0 0.05 here, right click key selected, and then at the very end, of course, it's going to be zero, so we'll type in zero here, and then right click key selected. So now let's take a look at how that looks.
So already we get a little bit more life to our ball. But what we want to have is this be a little bit more straight. So what I'm going to do is turn off the thumbtack for the translate Y. So now we only have the squash attribute. And you can see it's kind of wavy and all over the place. I think it's going to look a little bit better if we have linear keyframes. So I'm going to highlight everything, switch to linear keyframes, and then play and see what that looks like. I think that has a more consistent action for the stretching because it's kind of a mechanical action. It's the mechanical properties of the ball. And so linear keyframes are really good for mechanical objects. So you can adjust these however you want. And of course, you can go to any of these keyframes and adjust them independently. So now we have our squash and stretch ball. If I stop this animation and I go to the perspective view, I can zoom out a little bit. I can navigate to a better view and I can press six to see the texture. The nice thing about Maya is that we can see our animation from any angle. So go ahead and try to make a ball bounce yourself. This is just a simple straight up and down ball bounce. In the next video, I'll show you how to make a ball bounce and travel across the scene.